So welcome to this first video of the Python Programming for Beginners course. In this first video, I would like to tell you more about the programming language we will be talking about in this whole course. So Python was introduced in 1991 and it actually has nothing to do with the snake Python. Um, the name is related to Monty Python just because the inventor was a great fan of Monty Python. So actually it became a popular programming language since the 1990s and it actually became one of the most used programming languages in the whole world. So why should you learn Python? As I said, it is one of the most used and popular programming languages in the whole world. So actually it is on rank three of all the programming languages in the whole world. And that is because it is very powerful, widely used and universally applicable. And that is because it is available on Mac, Windows and Linux. So it is not necessary to have any special infrastructure. You can use it on your computer or on any web server, for example. And this brings us to number three, which is that the fields of application are nearly everywhere. As I said, you can install it and use it everywhere. And so the most used online services in the whole world are based on Python, just like Netflix or Dropbox. And number four, it is also very easy to learn. So what does it mean? It has a clear and structured syntax and it is object oriented. We will be digging deeper into this during the course. So what does it mean? We have parts of the software that are nested in classes or objects it produces less errors and we have a better structure in large projects. So for example, you can use whole code blocks that can be reused. But I will tell you more about this later on. So what does Python have that other programming languages don't have? So as I said, it has a clear and structured way of coding. So this produces very compact and especially readable programs. Actually, you don't need to compile what you do. So it don't have to be rendered or especially calculated by the computer. And this saves a lot of time. You can run all of your applications right away. And then it brings fast programming of small tasks. So actually you can create solutions for small tasks in a very short time. And uh, Python is not very powerful out of the box, but it brings a lot of plugins and extensions. So a lot of standard libraries make it very powerful. So that is Python. So what you can do with Python is to sum it up, you can create web applications. For example, you can create own apps or software for your computer. And you can even make plugins for big programs like OpenOffice or Cinema 4D, which is a 3D rendering program for movie production, for example. And this all is very easy to learn. So let's get into the course and let's get it started. Before we get started with the coding, we need to install Python on your computer. That is actually very easy and it is necessary because your computer won't be able to run Python out of the box. So what we need to do is we first check if Python is already installed because sometimes some software needs it installed and then it will be installed during the installation process. So first of all, if you have a Windows computer, type into the search field cmd.exe and then you have the terminal which is on Mac, the terminal app and there you can run commands. And there you type in Python spacebar and then minus minus version. And if you then hit enter and the output is nothing, so no version, it is not installed. If it shows you a version, it is installed. But actually you have to check on python.org if it is the actual or the newest version of Python. Because from time to time they remove or they change commands in Python. So first of all we go to python.org and we will download the Python installation package. So when you have the command tool open as I have here, you just type in Python minus minus version. And when you hit enter, I can now see that the command is not available. So Python is not installed here. 
So what I do now, I go to python.org and there I can find the downloads and the documentation section, but we want to download Python. So I hit the button here and then Python is already downloaded right away. So when Python is downloaded, you just click on the icon and start the installation process. But it is necessary that you check at Python to path because that is necessary that we can use it in the right way for programming. So when we now get back to the command line tool, we can now type in version or no Python minus minus version. And uh, when we now hit enter, we see Python is installed. We have a version. Actually, it works the same way on the Mac. So uh, I won't show it you in this video. You just download it the same way and you can install it the same way. So another thing that you should install at the beginning is a code editor. It is important to have an editor because you can create and format scripts very easy and it provides visual clarity because the code is highlighted and colored in different ways. So you can easily see, for example, functions and you can see even better more parts of the code and it is free of charge so you can download it. I will show you one that is very easy to handle and that I will use during the course. The code editor that I will use is Atom. Atom is developed by GitHub, which is a service for versioning development, but uh, this is for advanced programmers. So um, you just need to know that Atom is very easy to use and uh, we will install it now. So to get started with Atom, we go to atom.io and we can download it there. There you will find the download button. After it is installed, you can start it and uh, Atom is very easy to set up. So actually there is the window. As you can see, we have an untitled file there and then you see this welcome screen. So uh, to start, you can add a folder. This makes it very easy because when you have different files in uh, for one project, you can put them all in one folder and then you can easily switch between them in Atom. So now I can create a new file uh, for which I now type in test.py and there is my Python file. Um, and then I can start coding actually right away because this is everything I need to set up. So in this next video, I would like to show you the basics of the syntax. The syntax is something like a language. So it is the language the computer understands. And um, the syntax is comparable to the sentence structure or the grammar we have in languages all over the world. So what we need to do is we need to learn the vocabulary to work with this language and to give the computer understandable commands. So what we do is we write line by line what the computer has to do because the computer cannot do multitasking. So he works command by command and um, then everything is worked line by line. So let's create our first output. So what we want to do is we want to print a text because all the Python work we will be doing in this first steps of the course, they will be only in the command line of our computer. What that means, I will show you in a second. So first of all, I would like to create now the first output for our course. And uh, this we can do with the simple command print. And um, what we do now is we say the computer what he should print. So we do this by giving him a so-called parameter or a value. So what we write here is my, oh, sorry, I reused the wrong ones. My first text. So actually I didn't use the wrong ones. <laughs> so um, this is our first line. And uh, this is very, very easy. So um, I can now save it. And as you can see, Atom has now highlighted the text. So we see the command up here and we see the text here that will be printed. 
So let's run the command and you will see how you do that in another video of this course. So we will now run our script, which actually has only one line. So we now write Python test.py. This is the file name. I hit enter and as you can see, the computer makes the output my first text. Actually, there was a wrong letter in there. So this was the first command. And as you can see, it is very easy to give the computer a command. And what we want to do now is we don't want to give him a command, but we want to set a variable. And this is something that you will do very often while you are programming with Python or with any other programming language. So what does a variable mean? So actually I now give it a name first text and I give it a value and this is my first text. So now I can replace the text here by the variable name and when I run the command now it also makes the output because this is just something you can use in your whole code. Um, so actually it's make, it makes it easier, for example, to save texts, numbers, values. You can save it in this variable while the script is running and you can reuse it. And this is actually the very useful thing of variables. So what we do have here is now a line to set a variable and we give it we give the computer our first command. So what we now want to do is we want to use our second standard function because this was the first one, print is a function. And now we want to use another one that we can just type in here and that is called len, which actually is short version of length. So this function replaces or outputs the length of this text here. This is something you probably won't use that often, but it shows how we can use data variables and functions in Python. Um, actually, I will give you more information about data types because we have set this variable with a text up here. And uh, we can also set it with numbers, but it's a bit difficult in handling variables, but um, I will show you how to do it uh, in another video. But actually we want to explore now the difference between functions and methods, because this I already said is a function and we also have methods. So what we want to do now is we want to output my first text and then we want to count the length of this text or we want to count the letters in this text. So what we can do now is we can create another variable or we can initialize it and then we can use the name or the first text from here and then we add the method method with which is just count and then we can count the occurrence of a specific letter. So for example, I can now write E and then I can print the number. And when I now run the script, you can see that there's one occurrence of an E in this text. And this shows how we can use methods in Python. So basically this is the very basics or these are the very basics of programming in Python or the syntax of Python. And uh, we want to dig 
very much deeper in it in this course. So um, I just want to give you in this video just one more hint and this is how you can write a comment. So a comment is also or the use of comments in the code is also very common while you are programming because you can use it to for example um, skip lines in your code um, or you can make hints in um, in your code for your own documentation so for example I can now write for these two lines here I can now write something like um, counting the E and then this is not shown or this is not recognized by the computer but it is there for me so I now when I close this file and I work on it in another week I will see ah okay this these lines from here are now for for counting the E's in the text um, but this actually <laughs> this is much more useful when you have larger projects and uh, it is especially uh, useful when you work with different people on your code um, because then everybody knows what the other one has written so actually that's it for this video and i hope you got the first basics of python in this video i would now uh, give you a more or deeper introduction on data types because as I've already mentioned, we have to handle different da data types in our code, um, and this is not a um, and this is not only a thing in Python, but it is also important when you are programming with other languages, um, because the computer has to know what uh, it is, what it can expect from uh, different data or. Um, you need to know which kind of data you have, for example, in different variables um, that you are using in your code. So what we already know or what we have already used are texts. But uh, when we are programming, we are not calling it a text. This is a string. So a string um, is or consists of letters, numbers, and it has a uh, undefined length. So actually you can type like whatever you want and there's no maximum of letters or characters that you have here. And you can actually type what you want. So um, there's no limitation on that. But uh, we can also set, and this is what we have done here, we can also, uh, use numbers or we can set numbers for our variables so um, this method here count it gives back a number and a number is called an integer so this is a positive or a negative number that has also an unlimited length um, but it is a number so this or the integer that is coming back from this method um, we can use for calculating so we can also um, use numbers integers or floats that can also use uh, that can also use numbers like 2.5 or something like that and uh, this um, must be considered because when you are calculating you cannot for example calculate this first text with uh, or you cannot add um, the number to the first text because then the computer is confused so what we want to do now is we want to set up a calculation so we can do that very easy we can create a variable and we can write 3 plus 3 and then we can say print calculation and when I now run the Python script it says 6 so you can do that you can also write minus um, 
you can use every other way of calculating. So these are um, like the easy ones, the easy ways of handling data. But there's also a way to create a kind of small database to store more than one value in a variable. And this is something you do with a list, with a list. So it is like a variable, but you can store more values in it. And this is also very easy because you can just write cities and then you can use these brackets and then you write, for example, New York and you write Washington and you write Los Angeles. So each one of those cities is a own value and we can kind of pull out every single value. Um, so for example, we can now print out Washington and what we want or what we do now is we write print and we write cities but we now have to add something to let the computer know that we only want Washington. So we write in brackets behind that a index, an index. So actually this one here, New York, it has the index number zero. So the first value in a list in a list has the index zero. Washington has the index one and Los Angeles has the index two. So the first entry is not equal to one. The first entry is index zero. Uh, and what we can do now is we can also add something behind it. So for example, I can now write is great. And when we now run the command, Washington is great, but we or I forgot the space here. <laughs> and what we also can do is we can modify um, the entries in this list. So for example, we can add something. And what we can do is, or what we want to do is we write here cities index one is Miami. And we can also add something. So we can write cities and then this brackets and we can also add, for example, San Francisco and Chicago. Or we can only add one entry, for example, by writing cities dot append so this is another method dot append and we can write for example dallas so now we have added values we have modified a value in this list and this is the way that uh, um, this is the way you can store more than one value in a variable. But there's also another way and probably I should add here that this is a list and then there's also a dictionary. The dictionary has the same principle like the list but you can change the index. So for example or as in a dictionary you have two values that are connected. So for example, um, we can create a dictionary and for this we use those brackets. And then we, uh, we add the different entries. So for example, we can write Germany and Germany's capital is Berlin. And we can write France. And then we have 
Paris. And then when we want to pull out an entry, we can just write print capitals and then we can use the index just like we use in list. We can just write Germany and then we can find out which one or which city is the capital of Germany. So what do we get out of this? So actually the basic principles up to here remain completely the same and it doesn't matter how big programs become later. So ex actually with these basics, all program codes can be reproduced and you can understand program codes. So during this course, all you learned in this video and in the video before, it is kind of the foundation of what you need to know. And from everything now or from now on, everything we do is, or I do, I want to teach you is how you can build up a program and how you have to think while programming because you have to think in another logic. And this is something we also do in the next video. So after we went through the basics, we now move on to real program sequences or um, program flows. So what we did now is we or what we did until now is um, the way the computer works. So the computer works line by line. And uh, if one line is done, it jumps to the another line. What we now do is we modify this way uh, of the computer is working. So um, we want to set conditions. So what if something happens? or if something is like that or that, uh, this happens. So let's start with a very easy example. I give or I create this number here, which is eight. And now we want to find out with a condition if this number is smaller uh, than five. So I write here now, if number is smaller than five, then something should happen. And this is the command for it. So we can now write print, for example, um, the number is smaller or less than five. And uh, we also want to give the computer a command uh, if this is not the case. So we write else print number is greater than five. So when I now run the command, it only says number is greater than five. So this is a very simple way of creating conditions. And this one here is a logical operator. So this one, as I said, is less then, and you can also write, um, so this is less than, this is uh, greater than, but actually both, they don't mean not equal. For this, we can uh, use this operator or this operator. So in this case, it is, uh, one, two, three, four, and everything that is uh, five, six, seven, eight um, is bigger than, or is not included in this operator. And this is um, less than or equal. 
this is uh, greater than and uh, or equal <laughs> and this is exactly or so it, it's equal and it means it's exactly for example five this is not equal so it is everything except five for example and these are the most common logical operators you need to know so we can now possibly add um, we can now change this example up here because when we now write five or in a good way when we use if conditions uh, we can write less than or equal um, and we can create or we also should create every time this um, this backup condition so just to give you a an intermediate conclusion what did we just learn so we can now take certain input or control flows and this is very important um, for um, the flow of a program because we also need to work with datas or with values that are coming from the user for example and those ones need to be checked and um, we can check them with this logical operator or with this if condition with this if line um, so let's take back the city example um, so actually I will add it here and now there was a format mistake from my side so we have now here cities New York Washington Los Angeles San Francisco Chicago and uh, what we want to do now is we want to write a code from it which out outputs the cities one after the other so for this we need to create a small program sequence and uh, we write cities dot count because then the elements in here need to be count and then uh, we also um, need to reduce the number by one because actually we want to go through the different indexes or we need to go through the different indexes and we need to start or we need to end with zero so when it counts when this line happens the uh, value of number is one two three four five but when the program runs through the different indexes we go zero one two three four so we also create a counter for each round because what happens now is um, we create another condition it's not if because it also needs to be repeated every time and this we do with while so while the round value is smaller or equal than uh, the number which we have up here the computer should print the cities with the index oh sorry i will create so with the index of round and when this is done the computer should modify the round value because it should end uh, at one and uh, so what happens here just to get you on the track so every time these two lines are um, every two uh, these two lines are executed the computer checks whether the round value is less than or equal uh, number so at the beginning we start with round with the value zero and we start number with the value four because we have five elements and we uh, reduce it by one so the zero and four um, 
we now start here and the first index that is inserted here is zero. And then the next line happens, uh, there's one added. So we have now four and one. And then it runs the second time, we have two and four. The third time, three and four. And the fourth time, and we have um, four and four. And then after it is executed, the computer will go on and then we can write, for example, print end of the loop because this is called a loop. And th this is the way, so we can now run this script. Oh, there was a mistake. So this created an error because I made a mistake up here. So this happens from time to time because uh, I should use the len command that we've already used. Now it should work, yeah. We have now here New York, Washington, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and the end of the loop. So this is now the, or these are now the basics you need to know for programming with Python. Python. So uh, let's get into the advanced programming. So in this video, I would like to show you or I would like to explain you how you can run Python scripts. During the other videos, you've already seen me uh, running different Python scripts. And now I want to show you how you can do it. So actually, when we want to run a Python script, we use the command tools of our computer. So on Mac, it is the terminal app that I have already opened here. And if you have a Windows computer, you will use the command tool. For this, you just hit this, uh, you would just hit the start menu. And there you just type in CMD and there you open the command tool. Actually, all the commands you uh, will use or you have to use to, uh, to run a script, um, they are basically the same. So all I can I do here on the Mac, you can also do on your Windows computer. So first of all, um, when you are running a script, you always have to be aware that you are uh, navigating through the file directory of your computer. So actually, we have to find the directory where our Python script is. So first of all, we have to know uh, where we are. So I just type in ls minus a l. And when I now hit enter, this commands will this command will list all the files and directory in the actual directory we are in. So when I now hit enter, you can see that I'm already in my Python uh, directory. So probably you will be in your home uh, directory. And for this, I will now type in cd dot dot because cd is change directory and dot dot is the higher directory or probably the directory before the actual directory. So I will now go back to demonstrate you how you will find your file probably. So this is my home directory. Here you can see is my desktop. Here are my documents, my downloads, my mu movies, music, pictures, all that you also have on your computer. So in my case, my Python script is in my documents folder. So for this, I now type in CD documents and I just have to type doc and then hit the tabulator and then you can already see it auto completes the directory. And then I have in my documents folder a directory that is called Python. So and then I just hit enter and now we are in the Python directory. So when I now list all the files here, you can see there is my Python script. So to run the Python script, I just type in Python and the file name. And I can also use the autocomplete function here. So Python and the file name and hit enter, you can see here is the last script that we developed. So this is actually how you run a Python script. There's no nothing more that you need to know.
at this moment. Actually, later in the course, I will show you how you can create a graphical user interface so you will be able to create a app, an app or an application um, that has an interface with buttons and input fields and uh, where you can uh, display results. But um, actually, this is just the basic, uh, the basic way to run a Python script. So let's dive deeper into Python programming. And uh, so in this section, we will go through advanced um, programming or developing features of Python. And I will show you or I will give you the foundation for our huge project or our larger project that we will have in the next section. So first of all, what we will do now is we will uh, go, go through functions. Uh, functions are a way to structure your code even better. And uh, functions are the best way to develop custom snippets that can be used over and over again in the code. Um, we will do this in a small example in a second. But first of all, um, I want to show you how you can make the user input something. So this is the function that we will use. Actually, um, it is called input, but we will use raw input uh, instead. So to give an example how you can use raw input, um, we will create a variable that is called country. And then we want to input, we want the user to input the country he or she is living in. So we use this function and in the brackets, we put the question for the user. So this is where do you live? Um, and then we will have a second line that is called print. And then we say you live in and then we will add the input. So this is the use of input that we will probably use a lot of times during this course. Um, and now we want to run this script and you can see where do you live and then it holds because it waits for the input so probably i can now say london for example and when i hit enter it says you live in london um, a lot of tutorials you probably find will say input is the right function but actually, this has been updated with a new function of Python um, that you have to use raw input because raw input uh, is expecting nearly every kind of input. So it doesn't matter if it is a number, a text or a mix of both. So this is the way that you can use the inputs. But actually, we want to do another example um, on how you use functions. So what we want to do is we want to let the user guess a random number between one and 10. And for this, we have to do another excursion um, before we will do this because uh, we have to import a so-called a module. So as I've said before, there are a lot of standard features that Python already has. So we have to import the randomization function. So for, the, for this, we type in import random, and this imports the random module. And then uh, we will give a text that says, um, I'm thinking of of a number between one and 10. And then we create this random number. So actually we want to um, 
yeah, we, we want the computer to find a randomized number or to calculate a randomized number. So for this, we create the variable thought number with the function random and the method rent int. This is for a random integer. So, and then we create the range or we add the range that this randomized number comes from. So we have this here, this is the randomized number between one and 10. And then the, us the, the user should guess. So we create another variable with our input. So we have raw input and the question, what number am I thinking of? And then we have to use this input because we have to convert it. So then we use number and then we convert it to an integer with this function here. So there we put in the input. So here the variable contains the input and then we use this content to convert it to an integer and then this is the content of number. And then we create this if branch here. So we say if the number, so what the user is putting in, um, is matching the thought number, it will print exactly. And then we can say else print unfortunately wrong. Oh, there's missing something. I was thinking of and then we add the thought number. So let's run this script another time. So you can see there is a mistake. <laughs> Actually, it is this mistake here in line two because this is a symbol that cannot be converted. So I have to use this one. So one more time, you can see I'm thinking of a number between one and 10. What number am I thinking of? So I can type in five, for example, and then there is another mistake. And uh, this mistake is showing how we have to deal with data types. So what I've said before, because this is an integer. And what we have to do is we have to convert it to a string. So this is what we have to add here before. So when we run the script one more time, you can see that it is now working. <laughs> so we type in seven, for example. Oh, this was the number. Um, so let's try it one more time. So I type nine and then it says, unfortunately wrong, I was thinking of two. So what does this do for us? Or what we have to keep in mind is that most of the data that we are using in the real world are coming from the user or what the user is putting in or the data is coming from databases. So we cannot, um, we cannot anticipate what the data is coming uh, or which kind of data is coming or what the data exactly is. So we have to provide um, we have to provide different ways or different exits for when different things are happening. So let's move on and we'll put that knowledge aside for a moment. So we are coming back to this in a second. Um, so back to functions. So why does this bother at all? Actually, functions are reusable code snippets um, when we use them, the code becomes more clear. And, and this is very important, we are breaking through this 
top-down uh, way of programming. What does this mean? Actually, what we did until here was we are creating various lines and when the script is running, the computer runs from one line to another. And when we use functions, we don't have this top from top to down uh, way of programming. We've actually used functions already. So we've used print or int and print, for example, shows what a function consists of. So this is the function name that is called print. And what we have here is called a parameter. So a function can have more than one parameter. So this was a method, but with a function, it works the same way. So the principal function or the princ basic principle of functions is the following. First of all, you are calling the function that is here. You're passing parameters. It runs the function and then we get output or return of values. And now we want to dive deeper into this. So what we want to do now is another example. And the idea is we want to write a function that can calculate volumes, which means height by width by depth. And the user should be able to enter the values. So what we will do is we will create the function first. So we have def, and this means we define a new function. We have def, and then we call this function volume, and we create parameters. So we have height, we have depth, depth, and we have width. And then we create variables. So we have height given, which has the integer of height. Then we have depth given and integer of depth. And we have width given with the integer of width. So this is very important because we will use a different variable name here to don't get confused uh, and to make it more clear and understandable. And then we will have a result. And the result is height given, depth given, and width given. So a, a very simple calculation. And then we add return because this is the value we return. So we return result. And this is already the function. And this is of course a very basic function, but we will also have functions that are much more complex. So now we write our suitable program right under it. So we write print and then we give an instruction. So we write for volume calculation, please enter values. And then we will have inputs. So we have height input with our raw input and height. And then we create two more lines. That is depth depth 
and width. And then we say print start calculation. And then we call our function. And we do this by creating another variable that is called volume result. And there we put in our result that we get back from the function. So we just write here volume and give the parameters. And then we say height input, uh, depth input, and width input. Oh, there was a mistake. And then we say print result and we say string of volume result. So as you can see, we have the calculation now up here and we just go through what we do with the, user, with the user down here. So we don't have all of this calculation thing down here. Actually, this is a very basic example. So we, we were able or we could uh, put this line instead in here, but I wanted to show you how you create a function. And now we want to see how this works. So I will just empty it up here, run the Python script, and then I type in the values. So actually we don't have a scale here. So I just type in 25, six and uh, 12. And then we get the, get the result of 1,800 uh, whatever. <laughs> but we've created a volume. And as you can see, we've now got a new structure in our program here. And this is the basic of um, the advanced programming that we will do from now on. What I'm going to show you in this video is not really basic knowledge, but it will help you to implement smaller projects, especially in the beginning. So what is the problem? I've already mentioned it. All we have learned so far are program sequences that run through and that's it. So there's nothing saved. And that's what we want to do now. And there are several ways to do it. The most common are databases and simple files. So databases are more for advanced users, but we want to write simple settings into a simple file and read these settings again. So what do I mean by a simple file? Actually, I mean just a very simple text file. And for this, we create it. And is, it is important that we create it the right way. So I will just empty it up here. And we create this by our command tool. So what we do is we just check that we are in the right folder and then we type touch. So this is another command touch. And then we call this file setting txt so this is a very simple and very um, basic text file and now the file is created so i can check it here so there is my very empty text file so let's get started um, it is important that you create this file in the same uh, directory actually, in the same folder. So now comes something bigger. We want to write a program that asks the user for his mood and we want to address him by his name. So there are two challenges. On the one hand, we want to store the name of the user. And second, we want to evaluate the input by finding out if certain words are uh, or were entered or if an input is similar to our default. So let's start with the name. 
actually um, with the start of the program, we need to find out if a name has already been saved. So what we do is we write setting file. So this will be our variable where we store the file content and or where we store all that belongs to this file. And then we use the function open to open it up. So we just write in the file name here that is setting.txt and then we have to set a mode. And this is very important because we just want to read what is inside this file. We will later uh, use another mode to write into, the, into this file. So we just write an R and this R uh, will read or makes it possible to read the file. And then we will read the file. So what we do is we create this variable and then we put into this variable um, this line. And this read line makes it possible to read just the first line. And what we then have what we then have to do is we have to close the file or the file connection. This is also very important. <laughs> and now we would check what is the content of this file. So we just write if name is empty, then we will prompt an input. So we just write name input, raw input. And then we will write, hello, nice to meet you. What's your name? And then we want to store what is inside this input. So we are now using again the setting file or we actually we are using this line from up here. So then we just paste it here. So setting file open, but then we will use the mode W, which is for write. And then we give the command setting file and then we use the method write. And then we want to write into this file the name input. And then we close this file again. Oh, that was one bracket. Too much. So, and then we print. Thank you. Name input. And else, so else there, the name is not empty. We just write or we just print nice to have you back. And then the name. So this is the first part of our project. So now we want to go a bit deeper. So we will now want to go through the emotion. So this is just a very simple and uh, not a great task, but I just want to edit it so you keep, uh, keep a bit on track, to keep you a bit on track. So we have now another, ver another ver variable that is called emotion. And there we will ask the user with a raw input. How are you? And now we are making it very simple. So what could possibly uh, contain or what 
what could the answer contain if he is good? It's good. So we just write if good is in emotion. And there you can see we have another parameter or a, a another way of comparing um, to data to variables or to data fields. It, and it's in. So this just looks if there's good in emotion. So if this is the case, we just print Great, have a nice day then. And L if emotion, and now we use another function. If emotion.find, and this is a method to, um, to find something, it's basically the same, but it's another way. <laughs> Emotion.find not, and then we say minus one. So this means that it is found. We print O oh, tomorrow will be better. But we also create, and this this is something I've already mentioned, we create another exit. Um, we just create another another exit so that our programs always or our program always runs. So we just write print sorry I didn't understand you. So what we are, so let's go through the program one more time. So we are opening the file here. We are reading the first line. We are closing the file again. And then we check if there is content in this file. If not, we are asking for the name that we are writing in our settings file. If there's something, we just say, ah, oh, nice to have you back. And then we are asking for the emotion. If there is good in emotion, we say, great, have a nice day then. If there is not, so not good, for example, we say, oh, tomorrow will be better. And if in any other case, we just write, sorry, I didn't understand you. So let's run this program. So when I run this script for the first time now, you know that our file is empty. So we will are now, or we are now asked for our name. So for example, I can write Max. So what's your name, Max? Thank you, Max, how are you? And then I can write, good. And then it says, I didn't understand you, but why? Actually, this, is really looking for this exact way of uh, letters. So as you've seen, I wrote it with a capital G. So let's run this program again and you can see, nice to have you back, Max. So it's it has been saved. How are you? And now I can say, good, great, have a nice day then. And I can also say, not good. And it says, great, have a nice day then. But why does this happen? Actually, because this is our first if condition. Uh, so <laughs> let's try it one more time. I can probably say, uh, not nice. Oh, tomorrow will be better. And now to, to get through our last example, I can now say, 
how are you? I can say, uh, bad. Sorry, I didn't understand you. So what happens if we now empty this file? So I will now delete it. And then I create this file again. So I just say touch setting.txt. And now I run our Python script again. Hello, nice to meet you. And it starts again because it is empty. So what's the conclusion? Actually, with this, we can now save smaller settings. And this is an important step to understand how we get on with programs. Now we come to a small project where we want to write a whole program. So we want to take the game of tic-tac-toe and we want to develop it. So what you will learn is thinking about through a program from front to back. And this is easier said than it is done because we will build some essential things into the program that you will need over and over again. And I want to show you the logic of programs. And I would also like to show you how you apply and bring together all these basics that we've gone through so far. So let's get it started. So first of all, we will create our tic-tac-toe field. And as you know, uh, a tic-tac-toe field has nine boxes. And to create this field, um, we will use a list. And uh, yeah, this is what we will do. But we, will, we won't start uh, with number one because what we will do is we will create an empty entry and then we will create our tic-tac-toe field. So just to make it a bit more easier to overview it, this is how our tic-tac-toe field will look like. So we have here now six, seven, eight, and nine. And so this is our field. So what, will, what we will do is we will change this list during the, the game. So whenever it is changed, for example, that here's an X or here's a circle, um, this list will be changed. And what we then will create is a function to create uh, or to put out, to print our tic-tac-toe game. So I will write field print for our function. And then it's a bit tricky because we will write print and then field one plus and then some space and then we will have field no not field field two and field three so this is the first line of our output function. So we have to create it two more times and then we have four, five, and six, seven, eight, and nine. And then we will print, then we will already call this function field print okay so this is just the very basic so let's go on because this is not worth it to execute it <laughs> so now we need to create another function and this function we will create below and this is called uh, the player input 
So for this, we will use the while uh, circle. And for this, we call it while true because this will call this function until we get a valid, uh, valid input. And so we will create a variable where we will put the move. And then we say raw input, please enter field. And then we want to try something. And for this, we will write move integer this input. Um, so why try? Because this needs to be tried because we want to check if the user has entered a valid number. And if this won't work, we will write accept value error. We will print back. Please enter a number from one to nine. And if this isn't the case so if there's a valid number we will write uh, we want to do something else so we will write if move is more than or is one and move is less than or nine then this function should return something because uh, show it so it re should return the move then uh, the input and uh, yeah this hasn't worked so we have two checks now here first we check if it is a valid number and then we check if it's between one and nine so then we will create this one here player move is player input and then we will print the move that we just got from here so we will write print move string player move and this is now what we've done so this circle always runs until we get a valid input until this happens until we return something and we uh, exit from the function and if this doesn't happen it also works it works works so this is the foundation that we've just built so we want to take a look at it so i will just check if i'm in the no i'm not in the wrong uh, I'm not in the right uh, directory. So let's try Python and then my... So this is our field and it looks a bit strange. <laughs> so there is something wrong, but uh, yeah, it asks for a field. So I type in six move six comes back and if now i type in 56 for example we get a wrong so let's type in 10 for example and it still runs five and now it exits the function um yeah so there was something wrong here so uh there i forgot something so now it should be correct Let's try it again. Yeah, so this is now the right field. And this was the very first basis of our tic-tac-toe game. And uh, yeah, let's go on. So we've created some very important parts for our game until here, but uh, we still have to add something to make um, or to have kind of a main routine for our game. 
So for this, we will create at the very top a variable that is called game active. And with this variable, we want to check if the game is still active or if it should be, uh, or, or if it should end. So first of all, it's, it's set to true because, um, yeah, we start the game up here. And now we will put this function calling and uh, this function calling in another circle. So what we will do is we will uh, create this circle. So we will write while game active. So while this is true, while the game is still active, we want to write field print every time and we will have the player uh, we will have this down, down here sorry so now we will add the possibility to um, we will add the possibility to set um, the fields and for this um, we will now go on down here so we will write here um, so if this player move is valid um, we will write we will check or we will change the field. So we can now write field with this player move. And then this can be set with an X. So the human player gets the X now. And then we will put this down here. So this is... Um, this will be removed here and then we will write here field print and then we will set another another variable up here and that is called uh, player um, play around so we will use this to check which player uh, is active and then we go down here and then we will write so we will print something that is set like player and then we have like play around Or we write <laughs> it's player x round. And then we will get the input and then we get back the field print. And then we will have another default function up here that we call it, uh, that we will call player change. And this will be there to switch between the players and for this we will create a global variable or we will use this global variable up here so we have to import it into this function so we will use play around and then we say play around so if play around is x play around will be the circle and else we have play around will be x and this will change the player and this is this we will also add to our main routine down here so we have the input 
and then we will change the field and there we will put in um, this variable play around and uh, then we will print it and then we will and then we will change the players so as you can see we are already quite uh, we already have quite a large code so let's give it a try but possibly there are some errors because you will always have errors when you are um, programming so I will just empty this screen here so we will have a better view so let's give it a try so it's player x round and then okay i'm now player x so i will write eight and now as you can see field eight is now an x and now uh player o it's uh, so it's three and then we can possibly write um so one and then you will see which error we will have because now i am typing in just like random numbers until our field is filled and now we can so now for example number five is an x and if i type in now five it's an o so it works until here but we will have now the possibilities or we will have to add the possibility now to check what is entered and we have to check if anybody has won already and this is what we'll do now so what we have to add now is the possibility to check if somebody has won and for this we will create a function that is called control win and um, yeah this is what we will do now um, so let's create this new function control win and then um, we will have a lot of if checks so i will write if the field um, one is the same as field two and the same as field three we will return the content of field one so why are we doing this because actually um, this will be our sign that somebody has won and uh, yeah so why one two three because they are all in a row and we have to check all of the rows we have to check downwards and we have to check diagonal right here so um yeah just to give you a task uh, i will make a cut here and uh, you could probably add all of the other if checks um, yourself so i will give you a second and then i will show you my solution and you can check if you've done it right so here you can see my solution so i have like one two three four five six seven eight nine and then one four seven two five eight three six nine and then one five nine and three five seven for the diagonal check so this is now what we have to add in our uh, main routine that we will have down here so we have to check if what the user has entered if this is um, yeah we have to check if somebody has won so we will add it below here so we will write uh, so we will create this variable with one and then we write control the win and if one so if this variable has content we will write print 
and then we will write player um, player one wins. But uh, we also have a second scenario. In this second scenario, uh, oh, we we have to check. We have to set the game active to false first. But we we have a second scenario, and this second scenario is that we got a tie. So all fields are then filled, and nobody has won. So we have to create another function to check if there is a tie. And this is what I call control tie. And then, and for that, we just check if all of the fields are filled. So we will write if field one is uh, an X or field one is a circle and and then or we, we we have to add a backslash first because then we can do it in different lines and So it just checks if in all of the fields, if there are, uh, if there is anything in them. So that's it. And uh, yeah, you can add all of the other rows yourself. So this is what it should look like. Um, I have now nine lines and if all of them are true, we will return it's a tie. And this is also something that uh, we can put down here. So we put a break here. Uh, if this, if somebody has one and then we also write tie control tie. And then we will have if tie. So if there's content in there, we will write if uh, uh, print tie because we already wrote it's a tie and then we also say game active is false and break and this is our whole game actually until here so let's play it <laughs> so we have five for example, and then uh, uh, one, two, and now I just need one more move with X. So it's eight, and now player X wins and the game has ended. So let's create a tie. So I will have five for, um, seven, eight, it's not that easy to create a tie. Two, nine, six, uh, one. Yeah, yeah. Player X wins. <laughs> so let's try it again. Five, one, three, uh, seven, four. Six, um, eight, and nine. It's a tie and the game has ended. So yeah, that's uh, probably our game. And um, yeah, that's the tic-tac-toe game that you can play with two players on your computer. So what we have learned so far seems at first like programs from a museum. So we enter everything via the command line and react to the input. 
Now let's take a look at how we can write a graphical user interface um, uh, called a GUI or GUI. Um, for this, we need a standard toolkit, which we can simply call via the import command that we've already learned. So as always, we will also look at a concrete example. So we now want to provide the function for calculating the volume with an interface. So what we now have here is the function that we've already developed and we can use it here now in our example. So let's start by importing a, uh, the standard toolkit kit with this called T Kinter. Um, and uh, this is how you can do it. So we just write import as we've already done with the randomized function. So we write import T Kinter as TK. So what's, what does this mean here? And why are we using it? So actually, this makes it possible that we can use all the functions, methods, methods, and everything that T Kinter um, provides um, with the abbreviation of TK. So yeah, this actually is it. So we just imported T Kinter and uh, we use it as TK. So what ha we have to do now? So actually, what we have to do is we have to create a window for our uh, software. So we write root, which will be our root window, and we call it tk.tk, .tk, which uh, initializes all of the functionalities that tkinter has. And what we want to do now is we want to create a text label. Um, so just a text that will be shown in the window. So we write now label one, because we will create more labels as we have three different numbers. Um, we have now here label one, and this label one is a label from TK. So we write TK dot label and we give it the parameters root which means this label will be added to our root window and we also hand over a text that should be used so actually i will just write volume um, and then we have to do a second thing with it because we have to write label one dot pack and this actually is just a function that puts it on the window yeah so just uh, <laughs> something very simple and now we want to see it because uh, what we have done now uh, is already visible so we write now root dot main loop and this makes the window uh, visible. So I will now save it here. So now I will run this script as we have it so far. So this is my file, tkinder uh, example. And then you see there is a deprecation warning, but this is not interesting for us. And my window is now up here, so I can put it in here. And as you can see, it's quite small and this is because um, it all it is fitted to the content so we have only volume so it's quite small and then um, yeah but our label is here and uh, <laughs> that's the most important thing so um, when you close this window your script is also closed at this point um, so we now want to do um, the last things that are necessary that we can calculate what we've done up here. So what we will do now is we will add um, all of the text fields that are necessary, all of the text inputs that are necessary. So we will write now here height. So in this first LA or in this first input, the user uh, the user should enter 
um, the height. So what we have to create now is another variable. So we will write now input height and then we have to create this module here. It's called tk.int var. So actually this will create a text field and this text field um, will add an integer value or will expect an integer value. But we also have to do something else because we also have to create another object and this is called input h. So it's just uh, another version of this name because we also have to create the text field and this is done by adding tk entry. So this is just the method to, um, to let tkinter expect some data um, that is an integer, but we also have to create this entry object which will be the actual text field. So we also add root because it's in the root uh, window and uh, we have this text variable um, that is called input height. And that's it. And then we just add input h.pack as we've done up there. And that's it. So we can now create this whole block and add it two times because um, we have also depth and width. So we have now here label two and label two and we have um, here now the depth and we have the width. Um, oh, there went something wrong. Okay, we have now label two and then we have input depth and input D and input D and input depth again. Then we have label three and label three and we have um, input width and we have input width also here and we have input W and input W. Okay, now we have three labels, three input fields. Um, what we need at la uh, what we need at the end is a button that the user can click. So we just add here button one. We call it button one and then it's tk dot button and then we also write root because it's in the root window and we say a text we add a text and this is calculate and we also add a command and this command is a uh, volume because this is the name of our function up here. And then we also say button one dot pack and then root main loop. So that's all we need for the calculation. But there's one last thing we have to do. And this is another label that we can now copy from here. And there we can write now result x. So why this? So this label should be changed or should get another text when the calculation is done. So what do we have to do? We get up here and we remove the return. So we just write here label for dot config because with this method we can 
configurate um, this label, we just write text and we can write um, a result text, for example. Result text. Because we can now add another variable that is called result text. And that will be result plus result. So what are we doing here? So actually when the user hits the button, our function volume up here will be executed. And um, actually this is the way we can modify the text in this label down here. So yeah, there's uh, just one last thing we have to change because um, as you can see, we don't have parameters down here in the command. And this is because we can't call uh, parameters down here because we have to add them up here. So we will remove them from here and we will change this here because inside here we want to have input height input depth and input width. So why? Because um, input width contains the input, the data, as you can see here, and input depth and input height. So those variables contain the data. So this is now all that needs to be done. So let's run our script one more time. So there is now our calculator. And I can now write, for example, 12, 7, and uh, 45. And when I now hit calculate, there's an error. So why did we have an error? Um, so to have errors is not, a, is not wrong. Because when you are programming, you will always get errors. And uh, this is also part of programming because you have to find solutions and um, not everybody is perfect. So one last thing that we've missed here is to write dot get. So why do we have to add it? We have to add it because um, this calls now this data function here to get the data. It's a bit complicated, so just add get to everyone here. And then we can now start our calculation again. So here's our window and when I now type in 6, 2 and 7 and I hit calculate, there's another error because we <laughs> forgot to change the variables down here. So let's give it another try and this is also something that you should be uh, aware of. You will always find uh, all the errors written here in your command tool. So, so let's try it another time and then we hit uh, so we hit enter and let's try it out. So this is seven, nine and for example six and our result is 378. Yeah, <laughs> 378 whatever. So this was just an example for how you get through a uh, through the programming of a whole program because this actually is an app. So this is what you call an app. It has a function. We have now created a graphical user interface. So this is just a tiny project and uh, this shows you how you can create um, or this is just the base basic principle of how you can create graphical user interfaces in Python because there are a lot of more functions of Tkinter. So take a look at it. This is just the basic. So in this video I would like to give you a short introduction on object-oriented programming or short OOP. So object-oriented programming is a basic principle after solving tasks in a programming language. So what does this mean? 
actually with the basic principle of OOP, code becomes more understandable and tasks get clear structures. So often OOP is very difficult to understand, so we will break it down here. We just imagine things. So just a thing. Um, a thing has properties. It has a property like a, th like a size or a color. And with the things we can do something um, or we can, uh, or the things can do something. And uh, what we have done so far is we have had data like inputs, etc., and we have given this data partly into functions and methods to have it again at the end uh, or to get other data at the end. So with OOP, this is linked. And what does this actually mean? So let's take an example. We take this car. Um, this car has properties. So what properties does this car have? So this car has a color, it has a vehicle type, it has four wheels, and it has a horsepower number. So all these properties allow us to get a picture of the car so that we can recreate it. Now the car also can do something, or we can do something with the car. So actually the car can start and it can be turned off. It can be moved and it can honk because it has a horn. So these are like functions that we already know. But in OOP, we call them methods. And now in OOP, we link the properties and methods. And this makes it a class. So a class brings together the properties and the methods. And if we now define the concrete color and all the other things, we create an object from it that you can see here on the right. So in technical language, this object is called an instance. And this is the very basic principle of OOP. We have instances or objects that belong to or are linked to a class and they have properties and methods. But there's one last word that we have to learn to understand OOP in total. And this word is inheritance. So inheritance is about classes getting properties and methods from other classes. So for example, our car class could have been created from the vehicle class. So from which we also created, for example, a truck class which basically has the same properties and methods, but it can also have additional properties and methods, but it gets the same properties and methods from the vehicle class, just like the car class. So next we want to take a look at how this principle works, especially in Python.